The following program is sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network. Welcome to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're learning more about pipeline infrastructure here in our state. So let's get started with Terry McGowan from Operating Engineers 139. Well, Terry, up here at the Coloma Training Center, great to be back. What are the guys up to today? Well, today, they're topping off our training season with a pipeline class. Uh, we had a great training season this year, Stu. We moved thousands of our members through with different uh, phases of our industry. Now it's pipeline time. And you know, on today's show, that's what we're focusing in on is the pipeline infrastructure in the state of Wisconsin and how important it is to our lifestyle and our quality of life. Our quality of life is improved through pipeline. Moving petroleum products and gas products through a pipeline is the most efficient and safe way to the general public. And right now we are showing our students how to properly install these pipes. And you know, when you talk about peace of mind, a lot of residents in our state have no idea how many miles of pipeline are beneath the surface. And you know, that's probably a good thing because we take it for granted, but it's out of sight, out of mind, and we can rest assured that it's been installed properly. You're absolutely right, Stu. If you were to see a graph of how many pipelines are actually moving through the state, through the country, you'd be amazed at the average of safety that pipelines actually have. Okay, and it all revolves around competent, highly skilled, highly trained operating engineers. It begins on the initial installation of the pipeline. You are absolutely correct, Stu, because you know what? Everybody who's installing that pipeline has to be safe. The people that are on that equipment, you have to know that they're safe. You have to know the people on the ground are working as a team, and you have to know that everybody knows what's going on on that job site, and they do it in a proper way. That is awesome to hear as a resident of the state of Wisconsin that our gas pipelines, our oil pipelines, natural gas pipelines are safe and safety is at the forefront, that gives the ultimate peace of mind. Not just safety for the general public, Stu. We want to make sure that everybody on a pipeline job is safe as well. So that begins with training, proficiency, and teamwork. Not just the people that are on the equipment, the people on the ground, and anybody else that's involved with the pipeline project. We want them all to be safe, we want them all home at night, and once that product is moving through that line, we want the general public to be safe as well. Okay, well I want to learn more about the training. Let's start today's show by explaining what these individuals are learning. Okay, well we've got some side booms here. The excavator has already come through and dug what we would call a ditch as opposed to a trench. In pipelining, it is a ditch. Okay. He's dug the ditch. These people are practicing on the side booms right now. They practice maneuvering the pipe around a little bit, and then they practice lowering the pipe down into the ditch. And so it's really a specialized aspect of being an operating engineer? It really is. It takes a lot of talent to run one of these side booms, and these students are coming along very well. They're quite a unique piece of equipment. Some of the old timers still refer to them as tractors but what they are are side booms. And the newer ones are hydrostatically powered. Uh, they've got counterweights that come out to compensate for the weight as they lower their boom on the other side. It's quite a piece of machinery. Well, let's take a quick walk down there. I want to learn more and get up close and personal with those yes, Let's go take a look at it. Wow, 
Terry, you get down here. How long is this piece of pipe you have set up for the training? This section is over 900 feet, Stu. We want our students to actually feel what it's like to work on a pipeline project. It seems to me you're trying to replicate the real world out here. Yes, we are. Uh, this pipe was all one piece. Uh, each individual section is called a joint. Now, this was all one piece. We had our friends from a UA Local 601 torch a section right here in the middle so that these two students can actually experience what it's like to carry this pipe and lower it down in the ditch. We had our uh, joint training going on earlier where they were holding the joints up and the students from 601 were actually welding the joints together. You know, I saw that and they actually had a, um, one of the side booms there holding it in place and then we saw the 601ers there, they were actually doing them just well, as you said. Like you said earlier, we're trying to replicate the real world so that when these students go out on a pipeline job, they, nobody has to tell them what to do. They already know. And again, if safety at the forefront, it's safety for the operating engineer running the equipment. It's safety for the 601 steam fitters there welding things together. Not to mention all the other trades that are on a pipeline project. Absolutely. And part of the exercise, you'll see these two side booms with slings holding this pipe up in the air. There'll be one man on the other side of the ditch that'll be signaling the booms uh, as to what attitude they should be at. And there'll be a man between the tractors signaling the tractors which way to track as they lower the pipe down into the ground. So it seems to me we're talking about a highly choreographed routine here. It is, Stu, and it goes back to what you had said earlier. We were talking about working as a team, and that's what they learn here at this school. They learn how to work as a team. Now, when you have that signal man between those tractors, they both know what those signals mean, and they know how to work in concert with each other. And so, you know, when I think about our pipeline infrastructure and the thousands of miles that we're talking, I mean, they gotta have more than just two side booms on a job. I've heard of jobs that had 40 side booms on them, Stu. Holy cow. In Wisconsin, we have two of the largest pipeline companies in the country, actually in North America, Michaels and Precision. And for them to have 40 on one job site is very possible. And in fact, I, I know for a fact that they did just recently. Wow, okay, so this is just one facet of the pipeline industry that you're training today. It is. We have what's called an anomaly dig up class. Anomaly dig up is very important because what you're doing is digging up an irregularity on an existing live pipeline and they go and dig just a small section out and repair it just to preserve the integrity of that pipeline. So then what they're doing is practicing digging right alongside of live pipeline. And when you say live, you mean there might be natural gas or oil or gasoline flowing through that? Yes, and, and that's why the training for that is so very important because it takes very delicate touch and precision. Another section, we have what's called right-of-way clearing. And what they do is they, they practice stripping back the topsoil, they change the contour of the land so that it's level so that our excavators can come in and dig the ditch. When they're done, they return the contour to what it originally was, and then they do a reclamation by respreading the topsoil. So again, safety in the environment at the forefront. Absolutely, put it back the way it was and make it look like nobody even came through. And what does that mean to residents of Wisconsin? It's out of sight out of mind, we don't have to worry about it, and it's mainly because of all the highly skilled operating engineers that are being trained here at Coloma. Absolutely. Once these people get out on their actual job site, you're going to see exactly what training does for them. With nearly 2,700 signatory contractors, Operating Engineers Local 139 is growing, thriving, and providing a skilled workforce for Wisconsin's future. If you're considering a career operating heavy equipment, Local 139 offers in-seat training and the opportunity to earn as you learn when you start your apprenticeship. Our training site in Coloma, Wisconsin consists of nearly 400 acres of rolling Kettle Moraine Hills, where our members have access to current and late model equipment with guidance from our experienced instructors. Skill improvement classes are conducted in the field and in the classroom to help our operators diversify themselves and to hone the skills they have already acquired. And with 6,000 hours of on-the-job training for the entry-level operator, you can be among the highest paid skilled members of the construction industry. So if you want to be part of a well-trained, safe and proficient workforce, become a member of Operating Engineers Local 139 and help build Wisconsin. Welcome back to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and so far in today's show, we've learned about the training it takes to work on pipelines here in our state. 
Now let's continue with Josh Retzloff from KS Energy Services. Well, Josh, a little inclement weather today, but it's not stopping the pipeliners and the operating engineers from getting their work done. You got that right, Stu. Our guys work in all weather. Okay, behind you, I can see that it's already welded together, and then there's a whole bunch of pipe that needs to be welded as it goes down. So before we get into your role with KS Energy Services, let's touch on what this project is. Okay, so what we have here is we have 20 inch steel pipe, approximately 4.2 miles. And this section that you're talking about right here is about a mile in length that we'll be installing in the ground per our client WPS. So would this be considered a feeder line coming off one of the mains, feeding that power plant with natural gas? Yeah, so we're gonna be tying into a 30 inch Guardian transmission line. That's oh what we'll be tying God. into. I mean, I look at the volume that can go through. To me, 20 inches looks huge. I can't imagine a 30 inch and I hear that it goes up to even 42 inch pipe. That's a lot of natural gas that's necessary to run a power plant. Yes, it, it is. Sure, so what is KS Energy Services role here on this project? So what we're doing here is we're welding the pipe together and we'll be installing and burying that into the ground per the specs of our client. We can install all different sizes of pipe ourselves here at KS. So yeah, there's all different sizes of uh, mains, transmission lines as well. What are the different trades that we have working on? So we've got our steam fitters, pipeliners uh, that they like to be called. We've sure. got operators and laborers out here as well. So it really takes a team to complete a project like this. It sure does. Out here in a rural area, is safety still the highest priority? Absolutely it is. Safety is very important for everyone that comes out on this project, whether they're a guest or they're working for chaos. We've got a lot of different hazards that we need to be cautious of that we're paying attention to while we're out here. Everything from proximity we are to the machines, the swing radiuses, even the weather you mentioned earlier today, monitoring the weather to ensure that lightning's not in the area where we would have to shut down. As it's been warm the last few days and making sure everyone's staying hydrated, that's very important. But the swing radiuses, the lifting of the pipe, staying out of those red zones, not going underneath any lifted load is very important. And just the communication with the crews out there, having the fire extinguishers available in case a fire were to occur. So there's a lot of different hazards that are present. We've got x-ray on site as well. And x-ray is very important to the pipeline industry to ensure that the welds are suitable per quality standards. As the pipe is being installed, this project does have 100% x-ray. Are they actually x-raying each one of these welds before it's buried? Yep, every weld will be tested before it goes into the ground to ensure that it's been installed and welded correctly. After we put coating on that particular weld to ensure that it doesn't corrode at that location, then the pipeline can be lowered in after the proper cooling time on the coating. And you know, it's great peace of mind for me as a resident of Wisconsin to hear that safety is at the forefront and is taken seriously. I know that you ran us through at least a half an hour, 45 minute I would call it course on safety for what our television crew could actually do out here today. And again, everybody wants to go home at night and they have a job to do. And so safety is job one. You're exactly right. Safety is very important to everyone, making sure everyone's aware of the hazards that are out here and stay vigilant on what we're doing every day. So what is the timeline on a project like this? This was about 4.2 miles, you said? Yes, this project started in early April and should be finished in September. Wow, that seems like incredibly efficient to get this job done. You know, I really appreciate you coming on, giving us some insight to the safety aspect of a pipeline project. It's been my pleasure, Stu.
Well, Terry, here we are, a real world project where the guys were trained to do just this back at Coloma. That's right, and, and you know the biggest thing is communication. You're working as a team. You've got laborers, you've got welders, and you've got an operator that's got to work with every one of them. And when I say you have to work with them, you have to communicate. You have to be able to tell not just what your signals are, but what you're thinking. Because this is a routine that you practice, you choreograph, and the only way to be safe is through practice and training. When that engine's running, you have to rely on signals, you have to rely on anticipation, you have to know what the person on the ground needs of you, and you have to do it safely. So you're talking about communication, not only with the signal man himself, but every one of these tradespeople on the job. That's correct. When you've got a welding crew like this, they all depend on that operator to bring that joint in in the right attitude so that they can weld it. And if it's not, he'll be able to make the adjustments. He follows signals. You've got a bunch of welders back there with hot sticks. You've got a welder up here giving them direction to make sure the joint comes in proper. And then you've got a couple of laborers that are bringing in the dunnage so that they can lay it down safely and just keep going on down the line. And what I was amazed by is that each of those joints is x-rayed. So they have to be done to precision. Each of them are x-rayed to make sure they're done with precision. And it's so important for that man up on that side boom tractor to make sure you've got the right attitude on that joint when they're welding that thing. And then it's important that he moves on to the next one and safely brings it home to the last one. You know, somebody might be watching and go, well, he's just sitting up there on the tractor. But really, he's paying attention. I'm watching him. He's looking for any signal from anybody, and he is the key to this whole pipeline project. Yes, he is. And you don't just get up there overnight. I mean, this is something that you acquire through years of, of being around the pipeline. When you go to Coloma and learn, one of the main things, again, is communication. Now, I happen to know Hank Mudrich up there started out as an oiler. Now, they took him out to the East Coast, and they broke him out at running a winch tractor at first, and now he's up on top of the pyramid right there. Yeah. That is a side boom tractor, Stu. That is the workhorse of the pipeline. That plays a major role, not just in the welding, but it also plays a role in stringing the pipe, lowering the pipe down in the ditch. These are essential if you're gonna do the pipeline. And as I recall, back at Coloma, you said on some of the huge pipeline projects, there might be 30 or 40 or even more of those yes. all in a row. No, we're anticipating some of that on some of the big projects that are projected right now. And it's nothing to see just a complete army of these things. And manning these things with the proper operators is essential. And it's not that easy. And actually, this side boom is just one piece of equipment that's on this job. That's one of many. There's a lot of pieces of equipment the operating engineers run on a pipe spread. In fact, why don't we go take a look at some of it? Wow, Terry, what a great example of all the different pieces of equipment that our Wisconsin-based contractors invest in so they can perform these projects. Yes, Stu, and what we've got here is directional drilling, otherwise known as trenchless technology. We've got four cricks further down on this right-of-way, so they don't want to disturb these cricks. They are drilling 3,000 feet to go underneath them, and this is all done through concert with every piece of equipment that's here right now is involved in this operation. Okay, and so this is a huge directional bore machine? Yes, this is a huge directional bore machine, unlike the ones we have at Coloma. That control house, that's the man that steers everything. He steers the bit, he, he controls the direction that that bit goes into. Those people up there, that's a mud tech, that's an operating engineer. He's got a labor up there that assists him. They mix the bentonite and the water to just the right texture, and he's in constant communication with the person operating the drill bit. That's a lubricant, so that that drill bit goes through the ground unimpeded with lots of lubrication and with ease. And so that's what I see, that brown slurry right there is the bentonite mixture that is the lubrication for the directional boring. That's the bentonite mixture. And again, for people who aren't familiar with the directional boring process, that actually drills a pilot hole, and then at the other end, once they ream it out to the size they need, that'll actually pull back that 20 inch natural gas line? Yes, and it's quite a feat. If anybody would have said that this was possible 30 years ago, you'd have thought they were absolutely crazy. Here we are. And the environmentalists that are concerned about some of the cricks and some of the other things that pipeline sure. goes through, this is what they do. It's undisturbed and mother nature goes on without any impediment. What a great way to limit the impact on the environment with again, our company's investing in equipment like this, the latest technology. And you said all these are operating engineers for the most part? They're all operating engineers. That assist excavator right over there, you might recognize that person. 
That looks like Doc. It is Doc. Oh, Come he's home. awesome. Yeah. And what a great example of how your instructors up there actually work in the real world. And that's why you can get world-class training at Coloma because when they come back to teach, yep. they're out here. They know it. See, that, and that's the thing. A guy like Doc is a great instructor at our school. And here he is for the season. He's out actually doing the work. Wow. And then down be beyond here, over that hill, there's even more equipment. There is, and if you'll see, once in a while you see a boom up in here with a rubber hose on it. Sure. That's a hydro excavator. What they're doing right now is actually cleaning out the mud from the pit. A hydro excavator is also capable of exposing utilities without any danger to anybody around them. It shoots a blast of water in the ground and then it sucks it back out and that way a machine doesn't have to dig around buried utilities. Oh man, I mean, this cutting edge technology is awesome and, and again, being able to be out here on site in the real world gives the viewer an idea of the variety that a career as an operating engineer offers someone who's looking. If they say, I don't want a desk job or I don't want to just drive a bulldozer. It isn't just driving a bulldozer. I mean, really, the sky's the limit. You're exactly right, Stu. And the beauty is we train all this at our school. We train how to mix mud properly. We train how to run the front end of a directional boring machine. We train the excavator, the dozer, the hydro excavator. We train it all. another operating engineer hard at work running an excavator. These people are so highly skilled, Stu. You can see that they work around people. Every excavator has a person standing by them. Those are operating engineers as well. Their job is to make sure nobody gets within the radius swing and to make sure they spot the excavator so that no rocks or anything else could possibly fall on that pipe. They're padding the pipe right now just to protect it. And you know, that's a great case in point. Again, how safety is always at the forefront. Whether you're out here in a rural setting or in downtown Milwaukee or Madison working with big pieces of equipment like this. And, and if you'll notice how intricate they can be with those large pieces of equipment, especially working around people and around sensitive material around the entire job site, they are professionals in every sense of the word. And you know, the sheer magnitude of this project, earlier Josh mentioned, I think it was 4.2 miles. We're a couple miles from where we just were and look at all the equipment that is here. And you said they're padding the pipe. So is this part of the reclamation process that we learned about back at Coloma? This would be the reclamation, Stu. If you'll notice further back, the first row of dirt is all clay. And further back, that row of dirt is all topsoil. Now, after they roll all the clay back into the ditch, then they come back with the topsoil, they respread it and reclaim it. Then they come in and seed it. And a year from now, Stu, you'll never even know a pipeline came through here. Boy, and you know, this is just one example of the pipeline infrastructure that we're actually fortunate to have in our state. That is correct. And you know, everything's about environmental safety. I mean, we're safe with our workers, but we also want to be safe and sensitive to the environment. The directional drilling segment was probably the best example of that. When you're going underneath four different streams, you're not disturbing them. You're not disturbing the wildlife. You're not disturbing anything. You're going underground. The, the best pipeline job is one that you can't even tell came through. And you know, to me, it makes me proud to be a resident of Wisconsin. And you think about pipelines, what does it carry? It carries fuel, what does that fuel do? It drives our economy, it adds to our quality of life, and let's face it, we all need energy, and we're fortunate to have these highly trained, highly skilled operators helping maintain these lines. You can see that, and k &S Energy Services has a lot of skilled operators working on this site right now. Wisconsin, uh, in fact, is home to some of the largest distribution companies, two of the largest pipeline companies in North America. And so the burden is upon us to make sure that Wisconsin supplies trained, safe operators throughout the entire country of the United States. And again, no matter what piece of equipment we're looking at today, they can all be trained. All these current and future operating engineers are trained at Coloma to operate these equipment. Yes, they are. And, and I got to say, I talked about the large distribution companies, k &S Energy Services, Michael's Pipeline, Precision Pipeline. These people participate in our training programs during the winter. They're our biggest cheerleaders. 
Well, because when we train our people, they obviously don't all work in Wisconsin. They go all throughout the United States. And we want to make sure when they identify themselves as member of the Operating Engineers 139 out of Wisconsin, that they do us a good job and make us proud. Well, Terry, it's been awesome again, as usual, not only learning more about our pipeline infrastructure, but understanding the vital role operating engineers play in our quality of life here in our state. And we're very glad that you came out here to see this. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com. The preceding program was sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network. With nearly 2,700 signatory contractors, Operating Engineers Local 139 is growing, thriving, and providing a skilled workforce for Wisconsin's future. If you're considering a career operating heavy equipment, Local 139 offers in-seat training and the opportunity to earn as you learn when you start your apprenticeship. Our training site in Coloma, Wisconsin consists of nearly 400 acres of rolling Kettle Moraine Hills, where our members have access to current and late model equipment with guidance from our experienced instructors. Skill improvement classes are conducted in the field and in the classroom to help our operators diversify themselves and to hone the skills they have already acquired. And with 6,000 hours of on-the-job training for the entry-level operator, you can be among the highest paid skilled members of the construction industry. So if you want to be part of a well-trained, safe and proficient workforce, become a member of Operating Engineers Local 139 and help build Wisconsin.